tutorial starts with a song, <laughs> but it's only a few seconds long. <laughs> Let's get started with animation. Hi there. This landscape looks quite amazing because of the texture. The texture comes from Substance, from Substance Alchemist, which is, I think, now updated and called something else. Uh, you find several tutorials about how to implement substance textures into Maya and this is just one I created from a photograph. Uh, it's uh, it's a pr very impressive tool really and uh, there's a, a nice workflow from uh, substance to Maya and that's what I did in order to create this texture. But the other thing which is interesting is the deformation of course and the deformation of that disk, it's a polygon disk, um, is done by uh, a few nodes in Bifrost Graph. And I know that uh, many of you are not interested in visual programming, so just skip this tutorial because you can do the deformation with the deformation uh, options in Maya, and there are lots of them, the wave deformer, for example. Uh, there are tutorials I did about this and other, other people did. But I want to show you the method how to create this deformation using Bifrost Graph with just a couple of nodes. And um, so all the rest, leave now please, watch the other <laughs> videos if you like, uh, and the Bifrost Graph folks uh, interested in Bifrost Graph, just um, stay with me. So the first thing we notice is that we have a mountain built up which accelerates decelerates, it decelerates now, and then it swings back. That's always an indication of a sine function. Now it's slowly going back. I like this kind of landscape, or even lower like this, the small hills. Now it's flat, and now it swings back and gets more hilly, etc. Highly depends on the resolution of that surface, of course. This is the Bifrost Graph, mm, well, editor. Uh, what do we have here? Let me just show you what I have. We start with the disk shape. That's the disk. This one, this is the disk. It is sitting here, this one. I have a type mesh here and a P polygon torus. They don't really play a role. I just can delete them, uh, but the because I did some experimenting there as well. So the polygon disk is hidden. If I unhide it, it looks like this, and it stays like this forever. During the whole animation, it will always stay flat. This is your original where we built up um, our graph from. So this is how we start. We read the graph from left to right. The disk shape goes into the has a mesh output which is a description of that mesh. It's not the points on that surface, it's the whole mesh. And the whole mesh information, it's these blue lines, goes into a node which is called set point position. We load the disk shape into the set position node before the set position node goes into the output and we actually see it in the scene. The second connection goes from the disk shape, the mesh out, into a node which is called get point normal. It gets the normals, in, in the case of the disk, all things pointing up, all the vectors pointing up uh, from that disk shape. In a sphere it would be different because they all point in different directions. But in the case of the disk, they all point up. Now once the get point normal node has the points of the geometry, uh, it is able to hand these point descriptions over to the next node. Let's not uh, look at this, but right mouse click at a watch point and here see we see a watch point basically it shows us what is being transmitted from the get point normal to whatever. The minimum value is 0, 1, 0 and the maximum is 0, 1, 0. It basically means that we have uh, lots of points with these numbers um, and they all point up. So it's not an X 
and z direction so we have zero zero and here zero as well but they all point up that's it's pretty dull in this case because everything points up so i remove this watch point now so this is the second connection from the disk shape it goes to the get point normal and the third one it is it goes to the get point position that's not the normal it is the position it's the um, value which uh, is x y z just keep in mind we need three connections one is the disk shape goes into the set point position one is the disk shape goes into the get point normals and into the get point position these two nodes are quite related now um, we create a fractal noise node the fractal noise node has lots of inputs and the inputs are right here so a magnitude of one a ratio a frequency ratio and a frequency which is controlled by something else namely my input the input is animated that's why I needed it because here you cannot animate anything but uh, the, this node here has the animation and let me show you where it is it is not in the bifrost graph you have to locate it here by selecting the bifrost graph and then you see under extra attributes the frequency that's the input actually my input goes into frequency and here I just used an expression I typed in a sine function I can edit it and it looks like this the bifrost graph shape one frequency equals sine of time divided by 10 because when you just type in time it goes too fast time uh, divided by 10 makes it much slower that's why we see this quite nice motion not too fast so this is what the input node does uh, basically keyframing these values here is another tutorial which I did and of course you find the link in the description now uh, the fractal noise receives a position information from the get point position that's pretty obvious and the fractal noise node gives us a number which uh, goes into a multiply node why a multiply because we need to multiply the get normals this is the zero one zero thing uh, and we want to multiply it by say 5 so it's 0 5 0 or by minus 2.1 so it's 0 minus 2.1 0 etc this is what these two connections do they multiply these two values the value from the fractal noise which comes from the get point position and the um, normal point information from the same object from the disk now the multiply node goes to an add node because we need to add this calculation here 0 minus 2.1 0 we need to add it to the points on the original disk and that's what's done with this connection so we add the multiplied normal values to the actual points and the output goes into something which is not this output because we need green to green and that's what we need the set point position node for that's another tutorial which I just recently did the link is in this description of course or you follow the playlist about Bifrost graph in my channel Now the set point position is uh, important in order to get things back to geometry back to blue from all this green stuff which is about the points and the vectors and now we have an output which is called mesh 2 in my case because I previously experimented with a thing which was called mesh 1 and that's basically everything now I want to show you 
the hypershade. The hypershade is really problematic because uh, it's such a mess here. And uh, it has to do with this shader. And I graph only this network. And this is the... Uh, it doesn't have to do anything with Bifrost. It's just a shading network in the hypershade. It shows the AI standard surface, which is the texture basically applied to my disk with lots of things. We have metalness, we have specular roughness, etc. And it comes from all these things. And the original node is the substance node number one, which uh, is at the source of this connection. And how to connect all these things, it's very easy because this graph, you don't have to build it up. It, uh, it's uh, create it automatically once you know how to do it. Uh, this is also in the description. So this was about a scene which I created with mountains and the mountains were animated over time with a sine curve and I did everything with just a few nodes, get point normal, get point position, the fractal noise node, the multiply and the add node and the set point position which leads to this really nice result. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.